You don't need to be famous to make a living from your music. In fact, with just several hundred true fans, you can make a comfortable side income and even quit your day job to work on your music full time. Selling your music could be as simple as emailing your fans. And send. And this is what it's all really about. The reason you're producing music at home is because you want to be self-sufficient. You want to be self-made. You want to record and mix your own music and have complete control over that and not have to go into a studio every time. So now I want to elaborate a bit more on that self-sufficiency and how you can apply that to growing your fan base, finding your true fans, and then making a living as a musician from your fans. So there's a really core principle that's gonna run through this video, and that's the idea of a thousand true fans. Now this concept was started out in an article written by Kevin Kelly, it's called A Thousand True Fans, I recommend you go read it. And in this article, Kevin Kelly, who's a well-known author, outlines this concept that you only need a thousand true fans to make a living as an artist. And what he means by that is if you can find a thousand people that will buy anything you do, they're true fans, and you can make $100 a year off those thousand people, you can make a very comfortable income from your music. Now, this is a much more achievable target than having to grow your audience to millions of people and become super famous to make a living as a musician, because all you really need is a thousand true fans. And I'm not saying it'll be easy, it'll be hard finding those people, it'll be very hard but it's a much more achievable goal and target than growing your audience to millions of people. Traditionally, you had to gig loads and then get a management contract or get a deal with a record label to create an EP or an album for you and then you had to get that distributed, and then you had to go on tour and you had to go the traditional route to get access to your fans. Whereas now, because of the internet, you can get direct access to your fans and have a direct relationship with them so that you can promote your music and your products and anything else directly to your fans. You don't need management, you don't need a record deal anymore to make it as an original musician writing and releasing your own music. Now the idea of a thousand people of course is very solid and it's not really how it works in reality. It could be that you have 10,000 true fans who you only make $10 a year out of. Or maybe you've got a hundred true customers if you're a writer uh, that you make a thousand dollars a year out of. It scales of course and the other thing to remember is that it's not exclusive. You can have your thousand true fans and then you can have a massive fan base outside of that. So you could have a thousand true fans and then a hundred thousand casual fans. They're not mutually exclusive. It's just the idea that once you find your true fans and your, your tribe of people that love your music and love what you're doing, it becomes much easier to become self-sufficient as a musician. Now, before I talk more about how you can find your true fans, how you can nurture them, and how you can make a living from your fans, I wanna just quickly cover the downsides of this thousand fans theory. Now, first of all, finding a thousand true fans is hard. It's not gonna be easy, because most people won't be your true fan. To find your thousand true fans, you're gonna to have to reach hundreds of thousands of people and expose them to your music in order to find your true fans. And you just need to accept that. But it's still much easier than growing your audience to millions of people and trying to get played on the radio and become super famous to make a living as a musician. Now, the other thing to consider is that true fans do come and go. So you constantly have to expand your reach and grow your fan base. Um, and you never want to stop growing your fan base, really. So don't think that once you get to a thousand true fans, that's it, you stop. Because instead, you then grow from there. You can go to 2,000 true fans, 3,000, or maybe you just maintain a thousand. It doesn't matter, but just remember that fans do come and go. And one more thing to remember is that if you're selling CDs or you're playing live shows, and that's one of the ways that you're monetizing your music, you need to remember that you don't get all of that money. There will be other people that take a cut, whether that's just the distribution or the printing company for the CDs or whether that's a record label, a management deal. If it's live shows, it could be the promoter, the venue, etc. So you need to think of ways that you can monetize your music and deliver more value to your true fans in order to get direct funds from them. And I'm going to talk more about that later. So now let's go into how you can implement this and actually find your fans and make a living as a musician. So I have a few tips for growing your fan base. And first of all, you just want to go where your fans are. And this is gonna depend uh, on the genre. Certain genres are more popular on social media, other genres are more popular live. And then there's music publication and blogs. Maybe certain genres, more modern genres, uh, are 
found more through you know music blogs uh, whereas more traditional genres are found more through radio play on uh, publications so you need to just find out where the, your fans would be what kind of music are you look at other bands in the same genre uh, and how they are successful look at where your fans are because you need to go to them and then what you want to do is just piggyback on other people's audiences whether that's getting exposure through other artists sharing your music uh, on social media or just supporting them at live concerts whether that's getting on music blogs music publications radio play podcasts websites, magazines, or just social media accounts that share music. There are audiences out there that people have already grown that you need to tap into. So it's all about networking and becoming friendly with these people, nurturing your relationship with them, um, and not asking for anything up front, just developing a relationship, and then hopefully down the line, they might share your music with their audience. So that's the best way to grow your fan base. Go to where your fans are, and then piggyback off other people's audiences. Now, a couple more things that are important. If you're going to be self-sufficient, it's important that you have a website. And on that website, you can sell merchandise, you can promote um, events, you can do uh, live concerts, various things you can do. But it's important to have a website if you're going to be self-sufficient. And then secondly, on that website, you want to collect email addresses. And you know this, you're on my subscription list. You put your email address onto my website and now you're watching this video so you can see the importance of having people's email addresses because social media although it's important especially in this day and age you don't own that following if you have 200,000 fans on SoundCloud but then what if one day your SoundCloud account gets deleted for copyright reasons accidentally even or SoundCloud goes down it becomes less popular goes the way of the dodo like MySpace and other platforms you just don't own that audience. Whereas when you have someone's email address, you have direct contact with them. No matter what happens, if all your social media accounts close down, your website fails, you still have someone's email address and you can still contact them directly. So that's important too. And again, just remembering all of this, that you will have to reach hundreds of thousands of people, if not more, to find your thousand true fans. So don't just expect it to be the first thousand people that come across your music. You're gonna have to get a lot of exposure to find those true fans. But then once you find your true fan, you need to nurture them. You need to improve your relationship with them because if they're gonna become a true, true fan, then you need to communicate to them directly and make sure they know they're appreciated. So always be yourself, always be specific. Don't try to appeal to everyone, have a genre and stick to it. Of course, you're gonna change genre as your musical career changes between albums, but just always be yourself and always be specific. Never try to appeal to everyone. And then what you wanna do is actually talk to your fans, engage with them, whether that's over email, on social media, in person at live events, over Skype just to get to know your fans better. Maybe you could start a Facebook group. There's just so many ways you could start to build a community around your music, around your band or around you as an artist so that you can really nurture your relationships with your fans and make sure they're happy. And now this step is important because once you have a relationship with your fans, it's then easy to deliver value to them. And by delivering more value, you can charge more and become self-sufficient as a musician. So think of ways you could deliver extra value to your fans or just ask them. And that might be in the form of live online concerts. It could be special editions of your albums. It could be vinyl prints. It could be um, box sets. It could be live DVDs. It could be in-person meetups. Maybe just Skype calls with fans because they're in love with you and they want to talk to you. Maybe you could start using Patreon so people uh, give you money every time you make a new YouTube video. You could write songs for people and charge them a lot of money to write a song specifically for them. You could take donations on your website and you can even crowdfund these things. So if your fans will say they really would like to see your writing process and they want backstage access to your life as a musician, well, you could create a documentary maybe and you could actually put that on Kickstarter or Indiegogo raise money from your fans before you make it and then make a documentary. You can do that for an album. I have a good friend, uh, when we were younger, he crowdfunded for an album. So he took all the money and then put that money into production, into getting good artwork, into making uh, videos for the singles. And it didn't cost him a penny. He came out the other side with a finished album that he hadn't paid for that he could then sell on top of that. So crowdfunding is really important as well and another way that you can really work with your true fans. One thing that you're probably not gonna monetize is your music to an extent because most people now listen to music on streaming services, on YouTube, or they'll download it cheaply off iTunes. People rarely go out and buy a CD 
And if you're not going down the traditional route, your CDs aren't going to be in, you know, CD stores. You'd have to sell them on your website anyway. So don't rely on your music to make you money. That's not really how it works anymore. And at the same time, gigs don't really make money anymore because there's just so much investment in, especially if you're going on tour, promoters, events, you know, live sound, tour organizers, all that kind of stuff. So think about new ways you can monetize your music and consider your music itself as a means of finding new fans. So people discover your music and that might mean giving your music away for free or at least putting it on streaming services so people can listen to it and then they become true fans. So you rope them in with your music but then you make money in other ways so that you be can become self-sufficient and create more music for all these uh, casual fans and then your true fans are the ones that keep you sustained. So just to summarize quickly, you don't need to become famous to make it as a musician. Of course that is a route and maybe you are interested in producing music at home so that you can get a record deal or find management and that's perfectly fine. But if you want to become self-sufficient, if you want to become a self-made musician, you want to make a living or make a side income from home recording and writing music, then just bear this concept of a thousand true fans in mind. As I said, it scales, it's not always that black and white but just know that you don't need to become famous to make a living as a musician because of things like the internet and the accessibility of you communicating with your fans. I know how daunting this can all seem and it might feel like you could never make money from your music. Uh, so I wanted to share a workshop with you that I ran as part of my $29 per month membership program called Start Making a Side Income Today. So it's worth at least $29, but instead I wanted to offer it to you as a free bonus right now. And inside you'll learn 11 specific ways to make a side income from music that you can start doing tomorrow. We're not going to cover royalties or anything complicated that involves labels. These are all simple, actionable methods for generating income from music that you can start doing right away because there's never really a right time and this is your chance to take action and take that first step. So it's completely free. I've never offered this as a free bonus before, but it's super relevant to what you just learned and I think it will really help you to take that next step. So just head to the link in the description to get instant free access. That's all from me. I'm Rob from musicianonmission.com and I'll see you next time.